I grew up hunting Green Ridge State Forest, a 46,000 acre piece of state managed public land in the Appalachian Mountains of Maryland. To an Easterner, 46,000 acres is huge. But here I was, embarking on a trip across country with three of my friends, Dusty, Chris, and Steve, to hunt the Caribou National Forest, which is just shy of a million acres of public lands in Idaho, Wyoming, and Utah. Let's go. Let's go. I don't have many hunting stories that don't include Dusty. We have many firsts together, and this trip only added to that list. Uh, we just walked two miles in, decided to, to come out of some closing. We were all sweating. It's 15 degrees to 30 in the past hour, so it's heating up. I don't know, got a long, long haul ahead of us. I should have been asleep as soon as my head hit the pillow. I was exhausted and restless at the same time. Exhausted from the trip across country and the hike in, but restless knowing that I am here. I finally made it, and tomorrow I'm hunting out. I finally allowed myself to drift off into a light sleep when I was awakened by an alarm clock I'll never get tired of hearing. A bull elk ripped out a bugle well before sunrise, and from that point on, there was no more sleep to be had. It was opening day of elk season. The elk were calling. When you spend a week six miles deep in the mountains, there will be a day or two that you have a slight mental breakdown. The mountains and temperature swings are enough to make you want to quit. It's cliche, but everything is strenuous. You can't get anywhere without busting your ass. There are places you want to get to, so you talk yourself into making the trek. And then there are places you need to get to, and it doesn't matter what your inner bitch is saying. You go. On this particular day, I was completely spent physically. But when your oldest hunting buddy calls, you make the trek. We've been covered up in them all day. Saw at least 30 elk, uh, 11 mule deer, and a moose. Um, one bull elk I couldn't get a shot at. Dusty's got a mule deer down up at the top of this hill, and we're hiking up now to help him get it out of here. While I watched the sun set on my last chance to get an elk, I found myself preparing to eat tag soup for a second straight year. But it provided me with a chance to reflect on what I had accomplished. Everything is harder in the West. It's harder to eat, harder to get water, harder to sleep, harder to stay warm, harder to stay cool, and it was damn sure harder to hunt. Everything required more effort than anything I had previously experienced. The terrain makes you feel insignificant, like we as humans weren't even made to be there in the first place. My sense of scale and perception were all out of whack. And while all of that could have been discouraging, it provided me with a sense of pride that I hadn't really experienced before. I was here, I was experiencing it, and I can come back and do it again as often as I'd like, because I am a public landowner. The excitement we enjoyed at our departure is mirrored by that of our return. The opportunity to see and hold your children after a week in the backcountry is difficult to put in words. And while I dread the day they are old enough to leave me, I look forward to their return to hear of the amazing adventures they are able to find on their own. The public land systems throughout our country are the avenues to which any of us can experience the thrill of new sights and sounds. There are new adventures available to any outdoorsman. You just have to allow yourself to go find them.